we pretty much finished off verse 3, but perhaps the last paragraph I didn't really clarify, so I'm going to clarify it at this study. So Ephesians chapter 3, verse 3, it says, How that by revelation he may known unto me the mystery. So remember that I explained to you that God gave a revelation to Paul unlike any of the apostles and prophets before. And what he revealed to him is a mystery. The mystery, as I explained to you, which I'll explain more at verse 6, is that the Gentiles are able to join the same body of Christ with the Jews, which the apostles and prophets have never uh, seen before. Notice that Paul writes in the parentheses here, as I wrote a four in few words. So he mentioned it a few times. He wrote about that before. If you look at all of his other epistles besides Ephesians and the epistle of, e of Ephesians itself, he did mention that a few times. Now remember, the goal of this Ephesians Bible study is for you to understand every single word in the verse we're covering. So try to understand every word. And if you don't understand every word, you're going to see the teacher explaining it already for you. All right, so that's the goal of verse-by-verse -verse Bible study. That way you can have a common sense uh, understanding of the language in the Word of God in your daily Bible reading. So remember, that's the goal. So if you think some of the things I teach is too simple or repetitive, no, it's trying to explain to you every word and the meaning and the whole context of everything we talked about in that whole chapter. So that might help you to pay more attention and to understand better, okay? All right, just letting you all know that as a reminder. Now, verse 4, he mentioned at verse 3, he wrote a four in few words. He mentioned it before a few times about this mystery, whereby when ye read, so whereby... So he's trying to explain here. In other words, when you're reading what he wrote about this mystery, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. That way, those people can understand what he knows, Paul's knowledge about this mystery that Christ gave to Paul, about the Gentiles becoming one body with the Jews. Now let's keep reading. Which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men. So Paul claims that the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the body of Christ here, it has not been revealed before to the sons of men. So in other words, all of mankind, mankind itself. So mankind itself, they were not revealed about this mystery of the body of Jesus Christ. But Paul was revealed this mystery. So God did not do it until Paul. Now let's keep reading. As it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. So... This mystery, God did not reveal it before to the sons of men. That's referring to mankind in general. Now, you'll notice that kind of language just to explain about the old king's English. When it goes like sons of men, you might say, why does it refer to uh, the daughters of men? Why does it say sons of men? So whenever it does that, it's referring to mankind in general. Now, when we say mankind in general, notice we're not saying womankind. We say mankind. Yeah. So everyone takes it for granted that when it's used as a masculine term, it's referring to all humans. So don't think that sons of men is just referring only to men. It is including you women. It's just how our normal language of English communication, we always use it in a masculine form. So this is the body of Christ, and it was revealed clearly. Notice it says, now unto the holy apostles and prophets. So what's important to understand that the hyper-dispensationalists may deny. So here's the thing about the hyper-dispensationalists that I don't like. So they might admit that the apostles and prophets during the time of Paul, they understood the mystery of the body of Christ, but the way they teach it, 
And a clear example is the general epistles. What are general epistles? General epistles are referring to the books of Hebrews all the way to Revelation. So those are written by the apostles. So since they're written by the apostles, what hyper-dispensationalists like to do is that they like to tend to aim that only toward the Jewish people, not toward the Christian church. Now, we do agree that a lot of the general epistles has tribulation application, but what did I teach you before, church? What did I teach you? Is it a single application or a double application? It's double application. Is that correct? All right, so y'all remember that. So it was a double application before. A double application that the general epistles apply to both toward tribulation doctrine and church age doctrine. Thus, knowing that fact, we do know that some of the writings in Hebrews to Revelation, a Christian can claim application. We can say, man, bless God, I can claim a promise from a general epistle. But hyper-dispensationalists, they hate that so much, they keep saying, no, it's only tribulation. A Christian can't claim a promise from Hebrews to Revelation. So in order to, uh, in order to have that mindset, they make it sound like that the apostles, even though they may not mean to, but they give the impression that the apostles, Peter, James, John, and all those people, are solely having the understanding of Jewish doctrine, Jewish tribulation doctrine, not Christian church age doctrine. So that's the kind of impression they're trying to Notice that that verse, no, it's, uh, is it just Paul or the holy apostles and prophets? Holy apostles and prophets, right? Is that what the Bible says? Is that what the Word of God says? So if the Word of God reads that way, then that means Peter, James, and John also understood the mystery of the body of Christ, the church age doctrine. That is important to understand. Now, it is true that it was not revealed before until Paul, but come on, even the hyper-dispensationalists are going to have to admit that Paul, when he was revealed the church age doctrine, he, the apostles also learned that and heard that from Paul himself. So they understood that. Acts 15 is very clear that they held the discussion with Paul uh, discussing this doctrine that the Gentiles are now enjoined to this mystery body of Christ. That was the whole debate of Acts 15. You cannot deny that. Now let's look at uh, verse 6. Uh, before I go to verse 6, I like how the Bible says holy apostles and prophets. Did you see that? Holy. Holy apostles and prophets. Now, let's be honest. Peter is not holy, John is not holy, and the, there were prophets during the New Testament that time. If you read the book of Acts, there were still some prophets ongoing, and then they later died out at the first century of New Testament Christianity. But these apostles and prophets are known to be holy. But uh, they're not holy, we know that. They're sinners just like you and me. But the Bible, it is amazing, look throughout the scriptures, it will mention that you're, you're called holy. You guys are addressed as holy. The apostles are addressed as holy. Christians within the church are addressed as holy. Specific individuals within the church are called holy. And why is that? The only reason why we're called holy is very simple, is because of the Lord Jesus Christ, what he did at Calvary. So what he did at Calvary, through the shedding of his precious blood, we're a blood-bought church, and only through the blood are we made holy. So then, being made holy through the blood, that's the reason why God sees us as holy. So, look, let's be honest, we still sin, and when I look at you and you look at me, look, we're still scum. We still mess up. Amen. However, because of the blood of Christ, that's a covering to us, God does not see the sin in us. The blood always shields us. As uh, one person might say that uh, if you take this ball and it's a black ball, 
I mean, you see the blackness of sin, but you cover it with a red paint, then you can't see the blackness of sin anymore. All you see is red, 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 and red. All right, let's keep reading. So this is all done at the latter part of verse 5 by the Spirit. So that's why we're made holy, obviously, and that's why uh, they receive this revelation of the mystery body because it's all done through the Holy Spirit. You might say, why? Because it's because of the Holy Spirit at Acts chapter 2. I don't know if you remember that, but in Acts 2, that's when the body of Christ started, when the Holy Spirit came down on them. So this body of Christ where the Gentiles and Jews are in this body of Christ is all a transaction and operation by the Holy Spirit. Not only that, the apostles and prophets are made holy because they get born again. They receive the Holy Spirit in them. 